appreciate folks being with us this morning. The uh, commissioners uh, have a, a, a full schedule. Okay, so we appreciate your courtesy on that. Uh, the first uh, section of our agenda today will be public comments. Uh, we would ask uh, folks if you would like to address the commission to please come to the podium and begin with your name and residential address. We do have a three minute guideline, which is a three minute rule today. So if I ask you to conclude your remarks, please do so. Is there anyone who would like to address the commission at this time under those terms and those rules? Good morning, my name is Melissa Connor. I live at 7710 Cattail Road. I'm here today to express that I am vehemently opposed to placing industrial solar projects on prime farmland. Thank you. Morning, uh, Josh Berry, 5320 Canal Road, uh, Pleasantville. Um, I'm a row crop farmer and pork producer in Walnut Township. Um, and eighth generation um, farm family. So um, I wanted to kind of touch base on a couple of things today. Um, one from last month's regional planning meeting uh, that you guys hosted and then um, another with the Eastern Cotton Cottontail Solar Project that's in our township right now, or plans of it anyway. Um, so at first, I'd like to thank the opportunity that the public, we got to go to the regional meeting. I thought that was very, very informative. Um, it was really um, eye-opening for me to see just how much the residents of this county care about farmland and that in some capacity that they still want that to be a main concern um, in, in this county. So with with you know intel and development all that that's coming in that we need to embrace um i think that in a way that is inevitable that it's going to happen we can't really change much of that um i would just say that we need to consider um you know if if we're going to embrace that plan for that solar has to take a back seat to that because both both are taking up farmland at a unprecedented pace that we want farmland in this county solar and development from the north um that that's really not going to be practical with farmland having the biggest target on its back with with everything that was discussed at that regional meeting so I feel like, um, and what I got from that meeting from um, a lot of our residents is it's going to have to be kind of one or the other. You know, if we have to find that right balance for farmland, we're going to have to either, you know, focus on preserving some land for farm and development or saving some land for farm and setting aside solar. So, um, it's become pretty pretty evident in our township um our residents do not want this solar um the amount of letters that our trustees have been um received and i'm sure you you guys have received the same um it, it is not it is it's not wanted period and i can attest for that because my the bulk of my land gets gets all the drainage off of where this cottontail solar project is assigned right now. If you would, sir, please conclude your remarks. Okay. So I would I would say um, in our in our best interest to find that right balance of farmland um, and be able to embrace the development that's coming down down the road in the north and wherever else that we would um, champion having exclusion zones for solar and our at least not by township by county thank you
What else would like to address the commission at this time, sir? <laughs> Good morning. My name is Dr. Mike Connor. I live at 7710 Cattail Road, West Bell Ohio. I'm here to speak that I'm strongly opposed to industrial solar panels in the prime farmland. Result of destruction where and now and in the future. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Dale Solt. Thank you for your time. And hope that you will seriously listen to my version of the solar project in Amanda Township. My grandparents bought 126 acres in 1909, the third generation to own and farm this land. It is listed on the state's historical farms as a farm over 100 years in advance. I have been a good enough farmer to be able to add four more farms to the home farm for a total of 618 acres. Fourth and fifth generation now manage the farm. Home farm is bordered on the north by a farm that is under contract to be leased to the solar company. That farm naturally and subsurface drainage is onto our farm. After seeing how the solar construction company has treated land at other sites, I'm greatly concerned how it will affect our performance. We've been told, well, that was a different company, but now let me tell you a little bit about what we've had. The AEP high voltage power line runs across our which the solar park project wants to connect to. The solar company wants to sign a lease as part of our land, but we said no. Then they said they wanted an easement on one of our other farms to connect two parcels they had under contract. They said it would be an underground transmission line and we could then farm over it. They were so sure that we would sign this contract, they dropped it off completely, ready to go, ready to be signed. Contract said, the developer desires to obtain a non-exclusive easement for the purposes of installing underground and or above ground transmission lines and related facilities. Exhibit B1 of this contract is a map showing the proposed easement and all the measurements around it. Contract states in black and white, the easement area contains approximately 84 hundredths of an acre. In the company measurements, the county auditor came up with 1.6 acres. Anyone see why I don't want to do any business with this company or why the county should be doing its business with this company? Hello, my name is uh, Isaac Berry. Uh, I live at 9665 New Salem Road, Pleasantville. Um, I'm an eighth generation farmer and I'm very proud of that. It takes a lot of generations working together to get me this far. Um, I went through the FFA when I was in school and I was told you're going to be brought with the problem that a lot of these people in the room aren't going to face because you're a lot older than I am. The world's not going to be able to feed itself. And I was taught by 2056. I Google that number this morning, it's 2050. I'll be 50 years old. My nine month old son will be in his mid 20s. So, another number I Google how much farmland is being developed each day in the USA? 2022 is approximately 2,000 acres per day. That's 1.3 million acres uh, in the United States being destroyed to. Uh, you know, development and all this. So how are we going to feed ourselves if we keep destroying farmland and doing this, you know, solar? Would you rather have limited power or limited food? That's, that's a simple question, but uh, 
I just, I really can't in my heart think that this is the right thing. I don't think that it should come this far. I think it should have already been shut down. The, the fact that I'm standing here in the busiest time of my season, taking a morning away on the best weather we've had all year, really should show that we need to be thinking about our decisions we're making for the future. I, I'm sure you guys have kids. I'm sure you have grandkids. I'm sure you need to think about them and what you're leaving behind because this is your legacy. This is what you're, you're in the position of power to do something and change and make something right. And we don't have to follow the path of the rest of the United States. Fairfield County can be the county that did something right. And they can look back and say, well, you know, this county did something right. And if you're still confused, I ask that you pray to God about it because we just celebrated Easter and he's alive and well, and he will give you the guidance you need to do what you got to do. Thank you. Good morning, Commissioners. My name is Francis Martin. I live at 9370 Cattail Road, Northeast, Pleasantville, Ohio, Fairfield County, Walnut Township. The last few months, I've been attending county planning meetings, these commissioner meetings, and township meetings. I hear a lot of talk about growth and development in these meetings. That's great. Now to the point that I'm speaking today. If these large solar and industrial power plants are permitted to build where I live, growth and development of humans will stop on a dime. No one wants to stay and live near these plants. It is time for the commissioners to name exclusionary zones before the Ohio Power Siding Board hearing to let these large solar industrial companies know where they can't be instead of them telling us where we're or where they're going to be. Let you, the commissioners, and the citizens of Fairfield County, plan our future. Remember, the power generated from these power plants isn't allocated to stay in Ohio, let alone in one township. Thank you. My name is Sherry Pimer, 3464 South Bank Road, Millersport. We're actually in Walnut Township, not in the city limits. Um, we are against the solar projects. And I'm going to kind of present it from a different angle here. Our federal government is pushing solar and wind so hard, they're pushing it down our throats. Last week, Jamie Dimon, CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase, came out and said, actually, he wrote a letter to his to, to the company and shareholders. And unfortunately, we still have one account at Chase Bank, which we won't have for very long now. Uh, but he came out and, and talked about the renewable energy and that it's going to come to a point where the government is going to have to um, start taking land from farmers by eminent domain in order to meet the demands that the federal government is saying that we need by 2030 as far as renewable energy okay this is being shoved down our throats so local governments are going to have to step up and step up quickly or we're going to lose our farms and our food and the eu is already talking about producing food instead of on farmland, producing it in labs and in buildings and taking away the farms from the small farmers. That's not what this country is all about. And I can tell you that EDF and GeneX, if you go online on the, on the, um, it's either the Ohio, Power, the Ohio Power Siding Board. You can go on and you can read their application for the Fox Squirrel Project in Madison County. And you can read that. You have to go way back. Um, but you can read what they're going to do, what they're going to put in, and, and everything. 
it's not what you think. And, and they, they say, they tell people, they tell people who, who they're trying to get leases with. We will return this to farmland when we're done. Well, they cut the post off. They do not dig them out. And there are thousands of them. I've talked to people who have leases. And they said, oh, no, they, they told us they're going to return it to farmland. No, they're not. No, they're not. Now, the state of Ohio has come up with requirements, but they didn't go far enough. AEP, okay, who do you think is going to pull out all of those underground wires? They're not. The solar companies aren't going to do that either. And who's going to be able to plow a field with thousands of steel posts in the ground and with all the wires and the cables? And what happens when that all deteriorates? And we've got a lake down the road. We're in Walnut Township. We've got farmland that, that drains and we're on the lake and we've got farmland that actually drains towards the lake and into the lake. So I'm just asking that please take a really hard look and get extremely educated before something happens that we can't control any longer because the federal government is going to push it. And the, the I heard an, uh, um, um, an interview with the uh, a guy from the Ohio Farm Bureau uh, a couple of weeks ago. He said they need enough land from the Mississippi River. All of the land from the Mississippi River on east is the amount of land that they need in order to meet the requirements for solar. That's a lot of the United States. And right now, if you go into the Ohio Power Siding Board and you look at the maps, right now there's 90 some thousand acres in Ohio and it's being added to every day. 90 some thousand acres right now on their site. And Ohio, if you look at the list of if, uh, efficient solar in the country, Ohio is, is it's unfortunately tied with Michigan, but it's at the bottom of the list. So we don't get enough hours to even warrant uh, hours of solar, of true sunlight, direct sunlight, to even warrant these solar plants. We need the farmland. Thank you. David Zollinger, 12186 Lake Road, Miller Sport. I too am opposed to farmland being used for solar projects. There is a national company called Ag Resource that has determined that in the United States there is no more viable, makeable farm ground. We're at the max for plantable, tillable usable farm ground now. We don't need to be losing any more build up, not out. Hello, I'm Carl Elder, 5669 Elder Road in Pleasantville, and I too am opposed to industrial solar on prime farmland. My name is Seth Pimer. I'm at 3464 South Bank Road in the village, or not the village, but the uh, township of Warner Township. I want to take it from a different angle. First, I'm not going to be visually affected by the solar panels, but I'm certainly in the future and presently going to be affected financially. Now, I know I'm old, but eventually the food prices are going to go crazy because we're getting rid of all the farmland. That's going to increase prices in, in uh, food. Also, if you look at the history of the solar projects in California, 
when they shut down all of the gas power power plants and nuclear power plants, the coal fired power plants, and they're trying to do that. That's the whole purpose of the solar is to shut those down. When they do that, solar may seem really cheap right now. But if you look at the prices and how they've increased in California, once they shut the, the cheaper forms of power down, they increase the prices of the solar and the electricity prices go crazy. And they've got you there. Another thing I found out through some research is that the coal, the, I don't know if it's a coal or a gas powered, power, powered power plant down in on the Ohio River, it's working at like 60% efficiency. If they were to bump the efficiency of that up another 10%, it would more than cover all the solar panel projects in Ohio. All they have to do is bump it up. I know coal has a terrible reputation. It's not that bad if you look at it. And it's certainly a much more viable and sustainable force of power for us right now. So look at the future and what the plan is, because that's that's for these investors that are putting these power plants along with the federal government. That's what their the investors are counting on is so that, okay, we'll put it in now at a cheap rate. But then we've got them and they have nowhere else to go. And of course, they can't keep up with the demand in California where the sun is out there all the time. And they're very efficient there. Here, we don't have, we have no efficiency for solar in Ohio and in the northern climate. Thank you. My name is Ray Steeman, 2444 West Point Road, Lancaster, Ohio. And I have something that I ran across last night on the computer. Judy found it for me. And it's something that's bad news for farmers in another way. It isn't even about solar. It's about what we're doing to the livestock that we have, shooting them with chemicals that, well, I'll read what I have written. By the end of 2023, they're going to get approval, try to get approval of vaccines that will be given to cattle. That's both dairy and beef. This vaccine has gene alternating ingredients contained, and CDC has info on this effect. All is RNA based vaccines going back to 2014 when they started with the pig swine flu that they had. And it's as Merrick and uh, I can't think of the name. What is that? Pfizer. Pardon? Was it Pfizer? You're talking no, I'm talking about uh, Juno and the other company they went with to make these vaccines. Yeah. They have come together and gone to the um, uh, gained a license to produce these products together and they put vaccines that it will be approved by 2015 when they started. But the schedule was the swine flu brought out vaccines for swine and chickens in 2015. This is already being done and cattle by 2023. We need to look into this, the farmers and everybody else, because we know that the vaccines that are being produced are not good for production and are not good when we eat the food that comes in that way because it's retained in our bodies too. That's a fact. 
I'll pray now for the decisions that you guys have to make. Lord, we lift up the commissioners before us and other people. You know the answer, Lord, and we just put it in your hands and we pray that we will listen and follow your directions. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm Judy Steeman, and uh, I have the same address as this guy. <laughs> you have said, and you know that I'm speaking about health. You know health and food go together, and fuel too. U.S. Senator blows the cover on Dr. Fauci's new federal job. Yeah, we all thought he was uh, leaving. Well, he's not, and uh, Senator Rand Paul discusses that. Next, the six ki sick kids are absolute gold mines for big pharma and big food. And there's two whistleblowers that really came forward and they gave a lot, of, they discussed how big food profits by selling addictive food that makes the kids sick and big pharma makes money from treating that sickness. Next, CDC confirms COVID codes used to track people. And Dr. Todd Porter, uh, said we do not do this for influence, uh, so why on earth are we doing it this for this? Using these codes are uh, using these codes also disregards the contribution of natural immunity. Next, a shock: one in five Americans are infertile. This is a WHO report, and <laughs> yes. There's uh, an estimated 20% women will struggle to get pregnant. We don't want population, I guess. Pfizer had a date, or has data on waning immunity. Speaking on uh, national TV, Fauci told many false statements. This is a meaning. This is really an evil man. He's done some awful, horrible, horrible things. When mRNA vaccines were first authorized in 20, FDI scientists had listed critical gaps in the knowledge base. Two of them were, one, effectiveness against the vi viral transmission, and two, duration of the protection. It's disappointing that neither Pfizer nor regulators disclosed this data until it was too obvious to ignore anymore. But it's even more disappointing and devastating that commissioners of Fairfield County did not take action when evidence has been presented for two years each week since April of 21, that there was something mighty wrong about this shot, and yet did nothing further to investigate this for we the people, except take Joe's word for it. This indicates that money, money, money was far more important than this county's health. And I think money, money, money has been more important as far as solar panels are too. Next, the three most important lessons from three years of hell, and that's the headline here. That's not the language I use. First, when a crisis hits, public health leaders should prioritize transparency and promote open debate. Secondly, don't pretend there is a silver bullet. Complex public health problems demand complex solutions every time. And third, policymakers must recognize that snap deci crisis decisions can leave people in great harm. And after I had all this together, then this came out. Moderna, just, just one bad thing document from Moderna. They've been asked them over and over, they uh, present this to the Congress, and they gave one. And in that one document, there's 13,681 bad things that are listed about the shot. Ninety-three seventy Cattail Road. I oppose industrial solar on prime farmland for all the reasons that you've heard today and in the past. Thank you.
Okay. Just would like to address the condition at this time. Can I just make one more comment? Um, there are some people that talk about, well, it's our property and we should be able to do what we want to with our property. Not if it's not properly zoned. They call the solar panel projects industrial solar for a reason, and that's because it's industrial. We can't even, we've got two properties in Walnut Township. We can't even build a greenhouse on our resident, rural residential property without going to zoning. So how are they possibly building solar fields without going through zoning? Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to address the commission at this time? Like one more. I want to. I want to compliment the commissioners, past and present, of Fairfield County, for preserving buildings like this. If you look at Lancaster Block, the or the square, the courthouse, everything. In my for, in my prior life, I was a renovation contractor. And to see how they preserved the history of Lancaster and the courthouse, what more important thing is there for us to preserve than our farmland? Thank you. Sir. May I say one other thing? You, you may. You were over time today and didn't stop when I asked you to. So please be very brief. I, I thought you were cluing me in to the time. Please. I just want to say once again. The famous statement that was made to me back in 61, that the American farmer that has kept America free, because when you have scarcity of food, and it's going to cost 60 to 80 percent of the income, then you're going to hear cries for revolt and revolution. Is that what you want? Anyone else would like to address the commission at this time? On behalf of the commission, we do thank you all for coming. Next on our agenda is an update. I'm not sure who's presenting regarding all the active transportation. Holly. They're going to appear online and do their presentation. All right. You're on. Can you see us and hear us? Yes. All righty. Carlos, will you be sharing the screen? You're both on screen. Awesome. Well, hey, good morning, everybody. Thank you for having us here at the meeting today. Um, my name is Karina Pegau, and I'm here with my Carlos, my colleague, Carlos Nigas. And the two of us are here on behalf of The Ohio State University um, City and Regional Planning students. And we are uh, preparing the Fairfield County Transportation Plan. Um, so a little bit about us. We are a small cohort of students all getting our master's degree in city and regional planning. And we have a, a team that varies from project management. Um, those of us who are doing public involvement, like myself. We also have a, a team of graphic design students and some, uh, a student who has been overseeing our mapping and GIS work. So for our meeting today, it will be less than 15 minutes, uh, but we'll cover kind of an overview of the plan, the goals that have come from the plan. Uh, we have uh, analyzed the existing conditions of Fairfield County. We have made a few recommendations. They're not set in stone. It's just some ideas. Um, we have a plan on how to implement some of these recommendations, and then we'll give out some closing thoughts. Thank you. So just to give a little project overview, so uh, a little bit of co context, uh, Fairfield County had a previous active transportation plan that was developed in 2009 and later updated in 2013. Uh, we were, the, uh, Fairfield County partnered with o OSU to uh, help our studio course, and this is what we've been working on all semester. And so the overview of our project, we reviewed previous documents, we analyzed data, we gathered public input, um, we assess the needs for the county. We've created some actions that are possible, uh, drafted a plan that um, will be shared, and then we have also some ideas on how to um, implement those plans. 
So for our kind of project area, we've divided in essentially four different geographies, one of those being countywide. So we looked at the county as a whole, and then we divided into three sub geographies. Uh, that's the city of Lancaster, Violet Township, and the Buckeye Lake region. Because we are a, a, an OSU class, we are operating on a really expedited timeline, which is a little bit atypical when you think about the normal planning process. Um, so we convened in January, we kicked off the project then. We sent out a survey to the entire county and collected data and started our stakeholder meetings in February. We looked at that survey data and had a public meeting in March, and now we're in April. So we're wrapping up our plan and hope to share that with you all soon. For our survey, we had about 430 respondents, which is really great uh, public feedback. So thank you to those of you who did help with that survey. By and large, we found that there's a lot of room for improvement countywide. Uh, it looks like we have moderate to poor quality for some of our shared youth pathways. We have uh, some work that needs to be done on our roadways. Folks are really interested in improving our sidewalks and crosswalks and all of this data. This is just a little snippet of it. All of this data was used to inform our planning process. Summarizing it in the overarching objectives, it seems like people really wanted to make it safer, safer to travel by active transportation. Folks wanted to see more multi-use paths, trails, and greenways for bicycles and pedestrians, as well as having connected routes. And then overall, everybody was really interested in supporting public health, active lifestyles, and good quality of life. Carlos, you're muted. Sorry about that, had the wrong shortcut. Anyway, uh, with all that data that we gathered, uh, not only from this survey that had 400 plus respondents, but also stakeholder meetings and meetings with the public, we started to develop goals and uh, priorities that would help guide us in the recommendation process. And so to really pack everything up together, we created this mission statement, which as you see reads, to develop and maintain a high quality, accessible and safe active transportation network for all users of Fairfield County. And then within that, uh, we developed four goals that, based on all the feedback we got, we understood are to be the priorities, the goals that people in Fairfield County wanted to achieve when it came to active transportation. So that meant making this network very connected and fixing the issues with connectivity and filling in gaps, making sure that people feel safe and comfortable when using active transportation, ensuring that the active transportation facilities that we do recommend support the high quality of life and lifestyle of Fairfield County, that they are uh, context driven and then finally to advance the economic development and recreational goals of the county uh, so these four goals then were what we used to help guide our recommendations uh, and you know to also guide the recommendations we wanted to understand well what does exist in fairfield county right now when it comes to active transportation uh, so there are a lot of maps in our report that will be out uh, soon but just to give you an overview we uh, looked at what is what are the shared use paths and trails that do exist in the county and these are marked in green and if they're hard to see really the the crux of it is that within these three sub geographies of violet township lancaster and buckeye lake there are some facilities there that do uh, provide great safe active transportation uh, but there is a missing connectivity between all these three regions and there's a great potential for this connectivity to not just be between the areas of fairfield county but out to Franklin County and down south to Hawking uh, to really uh, promote the connectivity of active transportation for the county and for the region. Uh, so we also took a look at the sub geographies very closely at Buckeye Lake to see well what's there already um, to with when it comes to bike trails, shared use paths, sidewalks. Uh, in Lancaster, we did the same to understand where those safe facilities are, but also took a deeper look to see what are the sidewalk conditions that you know walking is the you know form of active transportation as well and so uh, if you don't have safe facilities or the pavement is uh, in not good condition or sidewalk widths aren't wide enough to support you know walking with a friend or a neighbor or somebody then we want to address that as well and violet township we understood has has some good facilities uh, and is pretty well connected to the franklin county facilities that lead to areas like the ohio to erie trail but there's a potential there to improve that experience for uh, Violet Township residents. 
And so that leads to our recommendations. Uh, and so there are several of them in our document. The way we just briefly talk about them here is to show you a couple maps of what that looks like. So I'll let Karina start with our countywide recommendations. Thanks, Carlos. And just for a little bit of context, I am part of the group that has overseen a lot of the county recommendations as well as the Buckeye Lake region. And Carlos is responsible for the Violet Township group. And then we do have some folks in this call who represent the city of Lancaster, but all of us have had overlapping work. So looking at kind of our signature routes for uh, Fairfield County, those are the routes marked in blue. Um, going from north to south, so the north, nor, uh, northward, north and south route is on uh, Newark, Lanc Lancaster Newark Road, which connects Miller's Fort to the city of Lancaster. Uh, moving east to west, we have um, a, a proposed signature trail on 256, which we hope to eventually, you know, we would put, we recommend connecting it to the railway that extends southwards toward the city of Bremen. Um, there are two main signature routes that extend uh, northwest to southeast. One of those extending off of or following along uh, Route 33 to Chestnut Ridge Metro Park, and then another one that uh, extends off of Fair Avenue, which is in the city of Lancaster, that also connects to Chestnut Ridge Metro Park. And then we have two south road, uh, southwards facing routes that extend south of Lancaster. Uh, we proposed one that uh, connects to Amanda, which was on the previous plan, but we wanted to continue to support that. So we include that as a recommendation. And then one that extends directly south to Hockey and County and to uh, Clear Creek Metro Park. These are all recommendations. Uh, there are other alternative routes that you can include if you wish to uh, have additional routes, including one that extends on uh, east-west on Refugee Road, for example. So these are all just kind of general recommendations. For our more deliberate plans and policies, we wanted to, we encourage developing a regular maintenance schedule. Um, so to help with that safety and accessibility, we want the routes to be attractive to folks to use. Uh, so we recommend a regular maintenance schedule. Uh, we recommend building sidewalks that connect neighborhoods to different travel destinations. We recommend installing a mobility hub that connects bus stops or public transit to trails. So you can access those trails without driving to Fairfield County. We recommend expanding the easement to make it safer to travel to school by active transportation. So extending that from a one mile radius to a two mile radius to increase the sidewalk buffer. And then we also suggested street closures to support walking and cycling to major Fairfield County events, including the Fairfield County Fair and the Millersport Sweet Corn Festival. Looking at the Buckeye Lake region, we worked really closely with the Bike Buckeye Lake organization uh, they're doing a lot of work there currently to create a Circum Lake loop. Um, and so a lot of this has been kind of co-generated with them. Our primary goal here is to, uh, we, we hope to create this loop around Buckeye Lake. So you can see that here, we'll have to jog around some property and take some uh, public roads. But overall, we hope to, uh, we hope this plan helps support that loop that goes around the lake. For more of our policy goals, uh, we wanted to also ensure, or we recommend ensuring that transportation infrastructure is accessible to everybody. Uh, we know some folks use golf carts on the trail. We want to include uh, you know, them and walkers and bikers and so on. Uh, we recommend uh, creating secure and convenient bike parking so you can cycle around the lake and stop at your destination and park your bike safely. We also looked at the water-based after transportation. So uh, we, was, we proposed creating a master plan to support water sport activities like kayaking, canoeing, paddle boarding, et cetera. Uh, and then collaborate with other, other counties to create that loop since Buckeye Lake extends into three counties. Um, and then last but not least, we also want to support the wa wonderful water quality of Buckeye Lake. And so we recommended implementing low impact infrastructure like rain gardens to help filter in any rainwater so that the water stays clean instead of accumulating algae. Our approach for Lancaster is very uh, street specific and infrastructure specific as uh, our team focused on understanding what are the conditions of active transportation now there, be it sidewalk conditions, uh, where there's a lot of crashes relate, uh, involving pedestrians and bicyclists. And so uh, the Lancaster approach really wanted to conduct a sidewalk inventory so that we could identify and then prioritize where improvements would happen for sidewalk, not just for conditions of safety, but also connectivity. Uh, that Im involves uh, improvements to shared use paths as well, addressing la 
the crosswalks and sidewalks and ensuring that there's more studies to really reduce the number of pedestrian involved crashes along these corridors that had a lot of them, which included Main Street and West Fair Avenue. And in Violet Township, we saw this is an area that's really primed for being connected to be that uh, gateway of connectivity really to all of Fairfield County based on its uh, location, but also its existing facilities. So a couple high level uh, routes that were picked out using the existing right of way um, were some connections to be at Metro Parks out to points east and improvements on heavy, heavily used roads that uh, a lot of people mentioned they want to walk on, they want to ride a bike on, but they feel unsafe to do so. Um, so a lot of these recommendations are uh, related to policies and programs that help make that active transportation experience better for people that live in Violet Township. This especially includes connections to schools and ensuring that uh, you know children and uh, their parents can walk to school safely or they could bike to school safely if they choose to. Um, that also includes a complete street standards uh, for different road typologies in Violet Township. You know we don't want to recommend the same things in downtown Violet Township than we would on a county road a little bit elsewhere. Uh, we still want to reach those goals of safety for all users, but of course that occurs in different contexts. Uh, we want to explore the use of uh, any easements that could help make these trails uh, you know, better and improve yeah. connectivity. There's a lot of gaps between uh, suburban developments and their sidewalk network that could lead to easier ways for people to get to school, people to get to parks and places they want to get to. And sent, installing active transportation amenities along the existing network, uh, small investments that really make a big difference for people to feel safe using these uh, paths, for people to feel encouraged to use that. Uh, so those are what we're looking at in Violet Township. And then what well, we think, well, how do we implement all that? Uh, there's a lot going on. And of course, you know, we helped create a framework for all of our recommendations to give a guiding principle on well, what is the priority of that specific project? You know, can that be a long-term thing that we think about later with more resources? Um, you know, how prioritized are these uh, recommendations to the people that want to see them? Um, since we got a lot of public feedback, we understand a little bit more, you know, what are high priority things, but of course those priorities change or more voices come in and can alter those priorities. Uh, so we wanted to understand that for each recommendation and give uh, sources of funding and understand that we can leverage a lot of uh, local, state, and federal grants and other programs to help fund that. It does not at all have to be from anything that uh, we have locally. Uh, and then also met, we include metrics uh, to really measure what is our success when it comes to active transportation. Um, you know, do we see reduction in crashes involving pedestrians? Do we see more people using trails? Uh, are more kids going to school by walking? and? Uh, these help determine, like, do, are we doing a good job with implementing this plan? And so in our document, we have tables that look like this, and I don't expect you to read this right now, but all of our recommendations do have this information to help guide implementation down the line. And of course, this isn't a final document, so I want to make sure that that's uh, clear. This is still a work in progress uh, that with regional partners can make this a really great active transportation plan. And so I do want to close up that. Uh, that's been our work so far, and I invite uh, everyone, the commissioners, the public, to uh, offer questions and thoughts. So thank you for your time. Well, I'm Steve Davis, president of the Board of County Commissioners, and on behalf of the commissioners, I want to thank you for your presentation. And, and uh, hey, you really did a good job with it. Uh, you're, you're, uh, you were concise and to the point and uh, you did a really good job with your presentation. I don't have any questions at this time, but I'm gonna offer first my colleague, uh, Dave Levesey, the opportunity to ask any questions that he might have. I, I really don't have any questions, uh, but uh, again, I'm happy to see that you're working with the Buckeye Lake uh, for their bike paths. And that's somewhat of a challenge in that area. And I appreciate all the work you're involved there. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Fix. So I had the opportunity to um, hear uh, this presentation at the Regional Planning Commission last week. Karina, uh, thank you very much for condensing it. You did a great job with that. Um, you guys did a ton of work, obviously, and uh, I think you've got some great recommendations there. 
uh, I'll be interested to to read the full report when you have it done and, and see uh, some of those funding opportunities that you mentioned, Carlos. Um, you know, we don't have uh, a lot of money in our budget, uh, nor do Valley uh, Township or, uh, you know, Walnut Township or the city of Lancaster for active transportation. I can't speak for all of them, but, um, you know, it's it's on our mind, but it's not in our wallet yet. So, um, I look forward to, to hearing more about those uh, grant opportunities that you mentioned. Thank yeah, you all very thank much. You, thank you for your comments. We did we did practice this um, and you know we just have the things that we learned in class. So everything that drove this process was the comments from the public and also your feedback. So thank you also all of you there for your engagement and help as well. It really helped us create this plan and we hope to have it done in the next two weeks. So you should see it soon. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much for joining us today. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Any update on legal? Yes, Thank you. Congratulations, by the way. Get a baby. Yeah. Well, he did. Your, your wife did. Yeah. <laughs> Don't fair feel count. <laughs> um, Administration update. Okay. American Rescue Plan update from the 30.6 million received. 23.7 has been appropriated, 12.3 expended, 3.8 encumbered or obligated. Um, update on the diaper drive that continues to be a topic. Uh, the bottoms up diaper event occurred. Uh, we had uh, a lot of participation from Hall of Justice, Auditor's Office, Finance Group, Commissioner Staff, HR, JFS, and Juvenile Court staff all contributed to provide diapers and purchase diapers for parents who otherwise may not be able to go to school or work due to not being able to afford diapers to leave with their child care provider. Um, it is an issue and our staff stepped up to help address it. Uh, elected official department heads roundtable was held last week. I apologize for missing it. Uh, Hicks Partners provided an update on the grant submission process for townships and villages throughout the county. Uh, we had uh, over 40 in attendance and department agency updates were provided. Um, and it's a great reminder of what goes on in Fairfield County with our agencies and partners uh, and that it's uh, able to be shared with everyone. Um, additionally, South Central Power is uh, providing tours for their new offices, May 16th from 11 to 1230 at 720 Mill Park Drive. Uh, we would like to uh, thank South Central for their continued investment in our community. The 30 plus million dollar investment will house 200 employees and merge three South Central power offices into one. Um, highlights of resolutions, uh, the administrative approval packet uh, contains a list of the administrative approvals. Uh, resolutions, there are 15 on for today's voting pattern. Um, resolutions of note, we have a resolution to approve a community reinvestment area agreement with EEL doing business as DHL supply chain on Basel Western Road and Violet Township. Uh, this uh, CRA would include the Pickerington School District, the Eastland Fairfield Career and Technical School District. Uh, Rick, would you like to say anything about that? Yeah, this is a uh to follow up on the agreement that we did a couple weeks ago we're just you're going to see some other documents uh coming over with some more formalities this being one of them uh what this provides is a 15-year tax abatement but uh the document that was signed off a couple weeks ago uh includes a lot of other contributions that dhl will be making to the school districts and to the, uh, the county to improve transportation so uh sort of the um their benefit being the, the tax abatement, but then they're making a lot of other investments that are going to help develop the area and also uh, help the schools immediately. Rick, would you remind us what the new employment number is? Uh, minimum of 200 employees, uh, 8 million uh, payroll. We also have a resolution authorizing approval to expend, extend repayment of an advance for EV charging stations out at the Workforce Center. This is largely uh, ministerial and the fact that we're extending that repayment time to allow for reimbursement, is that correct? Yes. Okay, thank you, Rick. Um, we also have a resolution to approve the purchase of product hardware and licensing implementation services between CDW Government Inc. and the Fairfield County Board of Commissioners for the purposes of replacing the core network switch for county operations. 
Uh, in layman's terms, the core network switch is the switch that allows us to access the overall internet. We have to aggregate uh, switches from different locations, and then the core switch has to be very accurate, fast, and managed to allow for um, reliable internet access for all the county departments. So this is the replacement of that switch with an associated contract. Um, would you like me to move on to, we don't have any budget review according to uh, Mr. Hampson. Would you like me to move on to the recognitions? Thank you. Auditor Brown provided uh, that scoring of the proposals for the sexennial update, I can say sexennial was hard, uh, in 2025 is concluded. She added that her office is proceeding with the contract process for services in her ahead of schedule. And thanks to the good work of the REA team, especially that of Dave Guy, Josh Harper, Noel Salters, Linda O'Toole, uh, Robin Balthaser, uh, she added that they will be working with Tyler, the top scorer in the process to develop contracts for services. Anything you'd like to add on that? Yes, yeah, so I think about that. Um, we had two different um, vendor partners apply, and they were both very good proposals, very close competition. The two bids were within $35,000 of each other. It's a $1.2 million project. Auditor Brown also congratulates Curtis Truax and Stacy Knight for their certification in cartography. Um, Auditor Brown thanks GIS for quickly revising precinct shape files based upon the current Secretary of State codes, and Stacy Knight and Bev Anders for their volunteer work and planning for the Easter egg hunt in the historic courthouse. Um, thank you to John Coaches, Dan Neely, and Michael Skamyhorn for their AV work at the Ag Center. Uh, they got everything ready prior to the round table. Um, obviously, there has been some uh, supply chain issues getting all of that technology together, but they were able to do that. Um, should we move on to calendar review? Please. Okay. Would you run the calendar? Sure. Um, the commissioners have the child abuse prevention breakfast tomorrow at 8 a.m. at the Life Church Vineyard in Pleasantville. Um, we already spoke about their um, public officials tour of South Central Power. And again, that is on May 16th. TOAAA Hall of Fame recognition ceremony is May 17th at 12 p.m. at the Champions Golf Course in Columbus. Commissioner Lavacy. So, uh, Auditor Brown uh, nominated uh, E. Murray by Nose D and his uh, wife, former judge Kathy Murray, for that uh, recognition. And they've been awarded that. So, congratulations to both of them. Very excited. I talked with both of them, and they're very much looking forward to the um, ceremony. Thank you. Please continue with correspondence. All right. We have a memo from Dr. Kerry Brown, County Auditor, on April 6th. Subjects update on general fund revenues, audit questionnaires regarding fraud. Contract for services for the sexennial update in 2025, restructuring and internal postings, board of return update, the Ohio Women's Prison Entrepreneurship Program, and save the date notices. A thank you note from uh, Dr. David Ull for the opportunity to present at, at the Listen and Learn last week. Um, a Fairfield County Municipal Court Criminal Traffic Division fee report from March. Fairfield County Health Department Flyer, Health Department Advisory Council elects new leadership, appoints Board of Health members. That was on April 3rd. And the Fairfield County Adam H. 2022 annual report named Creating a Ripple Effect. That's it. All right, thank you. Um, we can Jeff Porter on jail. Yeah, jail population numbers for 4-4, 263 uh, with 32 contracted placements. For 411, we're down a little bit, 257 with 29 contracted placements. That's all I have. Thank you. Under old business, anything from Commissioner Lucy? Yes. So uh, last uh, week, Commissioner Fix and I had the uh, privilege and opportunity to uh, attend the uh, 4 H um, recognition of the 4 Hers who have uh, achieved many things uh, along with. Uh, Representative uh, Kevin Miller and Senator uh, Schaefer. And, you know, I'm always amazed and astounded. I'm sure Commissioner Fix agrees. 
of the young people in Fairfield County and, and you know, what a, you know, it always gives you faith in the future, right? So every time I attend that, I have a lot of faith in the future of our young people in Fairfield County. Thank you. Sir, Commissioner Fix under old business. Yeah, just real quick following up on that. It's a, uh, you know, it's a reminder every time we get a chance to do that, and Dave and I get a, an opportunity a couple times a year to spend some time with the, uh, the kids who are involved in the 4-H program all the way from the, I think they're eight years old when they start all the way through high school and uh, the folks who participate in the fair and um, it's, it is really heartening. Uh, it's a reminder of how important the agricultural community is in Fairfield County and we don't ever forget that. And it's a reminder of how bright the future is with these kids. They are hardworking, earnest, courteous, nice, uh, smart. I mean, they, they really work hard in their 4-H projects, and uh, it's good to have an opportunity to recognize them. Thank you. Thank you. Nothing under old business for the under new business. Commissioner Levesy. So tomorrow we have the opportunity to uh, attend uh, the child abuse uh, prevention breakfast. And, you know, when we talk about uh, pr protective services, which JFS oversees, you know, I'm always uh, always encouraged by those who are willing to become foster parents because, and they they do have a shortage of foster parents. So if anybody would like to be a foster parent, parent, please reach out. But again, some of these poor, some of these uh, young people really, you know, have a challenge, and and it's up to each of us to give each and every person a chance. And I think that's what some of these foster parents are trying to do. Chance. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Fix under new business. Yeah, this week we continue our efforts on the One Ohio uh, Recovery Board. Um, and, uh, we, you know, we talked in the past about um, poverty and, and how we're addressing that. Uh, Commissioner Davis is leading the charge on transportation issues, and I'm working on the housing issues, and Commissioner Levesey on workforce development. Um, through the County Commission Association of Ohio, I learned of a project called CityLink, which has uh, been done down in Cincinnati uh, with some success in addressing poverty issues that they have down there. Uh, one of my fellow commissioners from Hamilton County has invited uh, us to, to take a tour and to learn more about what they're doing uh, in Hamilton County to address a poverty issue. So this Thursday morning, uh, Jeff Porter and I are going to go down and there may be others, but uh, looking forward to learning about what they do, how they do it, and what their success is. So there may be opportunities to bring some of that stuff back to Fairfield County. Thank you. Uh, staying with new business, I had the opportunity uh, this, this past uh, Friday to be the test person on the new uh, EV charging stations out at the Workforce Center. Yeah, it worked. Sorry, that, that's the headline. Uh, but, you know, I, I several things about it that I think people should just be aware of what it is and what it isn't I guess in, in a sense I would it was only hooked up for 20 minutes I think I got seven miles range for that 20 minutes um, you know uh, so it's a, what could be referred to as a level two uh, charging station it's not a level three charging station so I, I just think you know expectations are key for people who want to use those it's kind of a, I'm going to be here for a while, kind of a charging station. Maybe you work there or maybe you're going to school there or something like that. But the other thing that it, it causes me to remark on, I guess, is just how unready uh, Fairfield County, the world is for, for electric cars. We're, we're, we're nowhere near it. Uh, it it's, it's just, we're not there and we'll be probably for quite some time. Um, you know, when you think about uh, just stay with electric cars for a minute, where are you going to charge them? Uh, well, certainly not at a level two station if you're traveling. Um, you're not going to charge at home if you live in an apartment or even in a house with no garage. Um, and it, it's just uh, as yeah. I tested that station, which I certainly support, I was also reminded that we Decidedly, or nowhere near prepared uh, for what people are pushing us to do. So, anything else under new business? 
Dr. Brown? Think about the update for the general fund revenues as of the first quarter, which closed at the end of March. The general fund revenues totaled $21.3 million, and that is about 35.8% uh, of the total estimates of $59.5 million. So the major categories are on track. There's a few other categories to watch, um, but the estimates are um, accurate estimates. And that's important as we think about the future as well. In terms of the financial reporting, I did want everybody to know that there will be questionnaires that you will receive. And these questionnaires are from the auditors. The questionnaires are similar to what we've received in the past. The format looks different. So this format, in that it's different, doesn't indicate that there's anything wrong. It's a questionnaire about fraud. It's for general uh, um, auditing standards. It's similar questions that you've seen in the past. The format's just quite different. So I have mine completed if you wanted to see that, um, but it relates to comments about internal control. And you'll remember how we all throughout the year, we had internal control discussions on, in our newsletter, in our updated manual, in various memos. So that's what this particular questionnaire relates to. Also just wanted to real quick let you know that the Board of Revision update, um, after tomorrow we will have 38 open cases without pending action. And then um, finally, just wanted to report that there's a couple of different volunteer activities that are going on with the Ohio Prisons Entrepreneur Program. And if there are women who would like to participate with me, this is a very encouraging, very positive program um, to help share information about entrepreneurship as well as management accounting, leadership topics for folks who probably have not had role models in their life before. So it's a very encouraging program and one that I'd like to see others engaged in. You can be engaged in in any level that you'd like, and there are a lot of different opportunities for it. You will see some restructuring internal postings within um, our office, as well as a save the date notice, a flyer coming out for June. And that save the date notice is not listed on the memo from this week, but that save the date notice is for the Heritage District Tour at 108 North High. And we're doing some work with the Soil and Water Conservation District and with um, the Master Gardeners um, to help spruce the area up and also encourage a little more education about some indigenous plants. Thank you, Dr. Brown. The other department heads are elected officials under new business. Here you go. My colleagues indulge a five minute recess. This yes. is in recess for five minutes. When we return, we'll go through our voting pattern. Following that, we'll adjourn. Following that, we'll be in CDBG hearings. Of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Now, we have any announcements? We do not. <laughs> Well, it's not really an announcement, but um, I was supposed to join my colleagues at the uh, 4-H ceremony uh, recently and was not able to do that. I haven't been able to do a number of things. I'm still on the on the back side of pneumonia. I'm uh, getting a little better every day, and uh, I'm all right. But uh, I have personally had to miss some things. I wanted to publicly thank my colleagues who have stepped up and covered in those situations when I wasn't um, available. We'll move on to the approval minutes for April 4th, uh, 2023. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Commissioner Fix? Yes. Commissioner Levesey? Yes. Commissioner Davis? Yes. Minutes okay. past 3-0. Move on to the uh, approval of the roundtable minutes for April 4, 2023. So moved. Second. Discussion. Scholar roll. Commissioner Fix? Yes. Commissioner Levesey? Yes. Commissioner Davis? Abstain. Minutes past 2 0. From the Commissioner's Office, Resolution 2023 4.11.A, a resolution to approve a memo expense, a memo receipt for reimbursing Fairfield County Utilities. Yeah, commissioners, I move items A and B. Second. Discussion. Mr. Fix? Yes. Mr. Levesey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. 
Motions passed 3-0 from the Fairfield County Auditor Payroll Division. Resolution 2023-4.11.C, a resolution authorizing a memo expense memo receipt for the general fund 2% administration fee for managing the county self-insurance program, fund number 5376 to general number 1001. So moved. Second. Discussion? This is simply a calculation that shows the administrative fee that goes to the general fund. While it's accomplished by payroll, it isn't something that payroll receives. I thought I should say that as the way it was framed. Further discussion? It's got a roll. Commissioner Fix? Yes. Commissioner Levesey? Yes. Commissioner Davis? Yes. Motion passes 3-0 from the Fairfield County Economic and Workforce Development. Resolution 2023-4.11.D, a resolution to approve a community reinvestment area agreement with Excel Incorporated, a Massachusetts corporation, DBA, DHL supply chain. Under economic and workforce development, I move items D and E. Second. Discussion? Rick, anything we haven't touched on that you wanted to share regarding either of these issues? Well, it's just a great tool, I think, that, that we have in the state of Ohio. and. Um, this is the first CRA that the county is actually executed. So um, this is showing, as we talked about development and growth coming, this is, I think, the first example of in an unincorporated area because not only Chester, Pickerington, Lancaster, have all done CRAs before uh, where the growth has been. We're starting to see that growth happening now in the unincorporated areas, and we're going to see more and more of a role in, in helping make these developments and smart development happen. And, and just not that it's relevant to either one of these issues, but I, I just want to say again to you, Rick, which I know I've said to you privately, but um, what you're doing and your team is doing out there at the Workforce Center is a tremendous source of pride uh, for the commissioners everywhere we go. Um, someone or another is noticing uh, and mentioning that to us in a very complimentary way. And, we continue to appreciate your work and the work of your team. If I may, sir. Mr. Figs. So uh, echo that, right? We've, we've been talking about workforce uh, development and the Workforce Center for a couple of years and how proud we are of it, how excited we are for the future of it. Um, but this resolution today is, um, you know, the economic development side of it, right? And bringing jobs into the county. And this is a, this is a big step for us to, to create this um, reinvestment area and uh, I'm excited about you know this starting point and uh, all the great development that can happen up not only in the northwest part of the county but as we go down 33 and look to the future of all the intel providers that are going to be knocking on our door already knocking on our door uh, we're, we're going to at some point catch up with the number of people who are seeking skilled labor jobs to those jobs that are available the continuous creation of these new jobs is the lifeblood of the county for the next 40 years. And I'm excited that we're taking this step today. So thank you for your work on the academic development side as well. If, if I may. Commissioner Levesey. Ditto. <laughs> well, thank you for your brevity. <laughs> <laughs> I would just, uh, Anthony Ikeni is here. And he's been with us for three and a half months. It's been you know, a huge part of Rocking uh, and rolling. <laughs> yeah, and it's been involved with the discussions with DHL and all of this from the beginning. And, uh, we're, we're lucky to have him here, and uh, it's nice to have somebody that can hit the ground running. Uh, so thank you to him, and, and also just this is the second, uh, second largest investment in here. Uh, so it's a, it's a big investment, and I know distribution centers aren't the um, what everybody cheers about, but there are four thousand people in Fairfield County that lead this county. Go work in distribution centers. So this is going to give people an opportunity to work. With. So I'm, I'm the, the word rock star is coming to mind, but I don't want to use it given a recent video that I've. Further discussion. <laughs> Please call. Commissioner Fix. Yes. Commissioner Levesey. Yes. Commissioner Davis. Yes. Motions pass 3-0 from Fairfield County Engineer, Resolution 2023-4.11.F, a resolution to request for appropriations for additional unanticipated receipts of memo receipts and memo expenses for fund 3445 BLO 36 bridge replacement. Under Fairfield County Engineer, I move items F, G, and H. Second. Discussion? Please call the roll. 
Commissioner Fix? Yes. Commissioner Levesey? Yes. Commissioner Davis? Yes. Motions passed 3 0. From the Fairfield County Information Technology, 20, Resolution 2023 4.11.I, a resolution to approve the purchase of product, hardware, and licensing and implementation services between CDW Government Incorporated under State of Ohio Term Schedule 534605 and the Fairfield County Board of Commissioners for the purposes of replacing the core network switch for county operations. So moved. Second. Discussion? Please call the motion. Commissioner Fix? Yes. Commissioner Levesey? Yes. Commissioner Davis? Yes. Motion passes 3-0. From Fairfield County Job and Family Services. Resolution 2023-4.11.J, a resolution to approve additional appropriations by appropriating from unappropriated into a major expense object category, fund number 2015, Child Support Enforcement Agency. For Fairfield County Job and Family Services, I move items J, K, L, M, and N. Second. Discussion? Understood. Further discussion? Please call the roll. Commissioner Fix? Yes. Commissioner Levesey? Yes. Commissioner Davis? Yes. Motions passed 3 0. Payment of bills, resolution 2023-4.11.0, a resolution authorizing the approval of payment of invoices for departments that need board of commissioners approval. So moved. Second. Discussion? Please call the roll. Commissioner Fix? Yes. Commissioner Levesey? Yes. Commissioner Davis? Yes. Motion passes 3-0. The next regular meeting is scheduled for April 18th and 9 a.m. Is there any other issue item that anybody would like to bring the attention to the commission before we adjourn? Stephen, looks like I'm going to have uh, six minutes, but that should be enough time. I'm looking for a motion. Uh, motion to adjourn. Second. We got a motion to adjourn to the second, although the parents and Bob saying I back at the same time. Motion carried. The commission is adjourned. We thank you all for coming. Commissioners will be right here in six minutes for the CDBG hearing.